year, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye to 2020 and welcome 2021. We are inspired to get ready for a new year. Okay, so one of the first things we're going to do now that all of our watercolor is dry is to work on the shadows of our ornaments. Now, we want to make the shadows in what is called an ellipse. So that means it's a little bit more elongated and it's not so circular. Some people think that the shadow of a circle should actually be just another circle. And that's not the case because we're not looking at it from above or straight on. We're looking at it from the front and it's a little bit tilted. So we really wanna start at the base of this circle and we're going to just make a little ellipse that comes out. So it's an elongated, it's like an oval, okay? I'm not gonna complete the oval because that would be underneath the sphere. So I'm gonna leave that part out and just bring it out and bring it back. Now it should make sense to you that if you have one light source coming say from the left, then all your shadows are gonna go out to the right. Here, let me turn this just a little bit, there we go. So you do not want to have one sphere with a shadow going this way and another sphere with a shadow going that way. That's not gonna make sense. You wanna make them all the same. So if we look at our artwork here, we're going to start maybe at the base of this one. I can have it come from the left, I can have it come from the right. I think there's a little bit more space over here so I'm gonna have it come from the left. I usually do it the other way actually. And I'm just gonna bring that shadow out and bring it back just a little bit longer. Start at the base, bring that shadow out and bring it back. Now, quite often your shadow is gonna run into a sphere. So we know, bring that shadow out and then I'm just gonna stop, okay? We know that this shadow probably falls on this sphere and that this sphere actually casts a shadow onto this sphere. That's just too much, too complicated and not anything we can replicate without actually looking at it. So don't worry about the shadows on these guys up here and don't worry about where this is cast. It would actually probably be cast on the back of the green one anyway. Just do the ones that are down here in the front. Keep it super simple, okay? Okay, now the shading. I'm gonna start with the bottom. We're not gonna outline these shadows. We just want them to fall naturally on the table and not worry too much about outline. So most people think of shadows as black and they like to use um, black in there, which is perfectly fine. Shadows are not always that color. They tend to be different colors. So I like to use sometimes a darker color and my choice is purple. So whatever dark color you use is fine. Usually a shadow is a reflection of whatever is falling on the table or the surrounding, like what color is the wall, stuff like that. We're not gonna get into all of that. So here's what I'm gonna do. Very lightly, I'm gonna put a little bit of shading within that circle. I'm not gonna make it really scribble scrabbly. I'm gonna keep it kind of solid and I'm gonna keep it super light all the way out to the edge of that line. Now, here's the trick with the shadow. The shadow gets darker and darker as it falls underneath this sphere further away from this light source. If the light's coming from this way, then it's lightest out here and it gets darker, 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 way down under here. So this is where I'm gonna make it the darkest. I'm really gonna put some dark values down there and then you know the routine from here, you kind of gradually shade it from dark to light. Now I'm using a crayon on this. You can use colored pencils if you prefer, or sometimes I end up using a little combination of both. So you're gonna make it go from the darkest, darkest, darkest underneath that sphere to the lightest, 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 all the way out on the edge of the shadow, okay? Super dark down here where the shadow and the, and the sphere touch and then lighter, lighter, lighter all the way out here, okay? And I'll do that with all three of those. Okay, so we have our shadows on the table. 
where these fall. They go from the darkest up close to the sphere to the lightest out at the edge. They're not scribble scrabbly. They still stay within that little light pencil boundary that I drew. And I'm not gonna outline them. I'm gonna leave it exactly like that. So now our next step is to shade the spheres themselves. But first we need to talk a little bit about our color wheel. So if we go back and look at our poster of the color wheel, then we can remind ourselves of some things. If I have a blue sphere, then I can use blue as the shadow, dark blue. But what if I don't have a crayon or a colored pencil that is quite as dark or darker than the watercolor I used? So now's where I use my color wheel. And I'm gonna go to the next color, which is a blue violet. And I can use that shadow on that color. Now, the hard part's gonna be yellow. Yellow on yellow doesn't really show up. So this is where you're really gonna use your color wheel and think about a yellow, orange, or even an orange shadow. You might even use both of those to shade your yellow. You don't wanna go this way and work on green with yellow because that really goes to a whole nother color scheme, but you wanna work your way this way. You can see where the blue and the blue violet gets darker. So you wanna go the darker way. The red, maybe you can get into a red violet or even a violet here. So this is what my thinking is gonna be as I work on those spheres. All right, so I'm gonna work on this green one first. And again, you have to keep reminding yourself of where your light source is coming from. The light source in this case is coming from this side. All right, so my shadows are all gonna be on the opposite side of the light source, okay? So I don't wanna shade anything on this side up here. That's where my light's coming from. I'm gonna stick it down here on the shadow, okay? You can either go on the other side or kind of below and on the side. Notice my finger keeps going in a curve around that sphere. We don't ever want to use straight lines on the sphere. Don't cut it in half. That's going to flatten it out. And it's going to look just like a circle again. We want to try to make it look like it pops out of the paper and it's three-dimensional. So here I have a green, just a regular old green crown. And I'm going to kind of work my way in this sphere around this way, opposite of the light source. So very neatly, I'm gonna go along that edge and I'm gonna to try to get it nice and dark. And then I'll get lighter and lighter as I move towards the center of the, of the sphere. Now you can see that this green crayon is pretty much the same as the green watercolor. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing it. It's getting there but I could certainly use a little bit of something else to help. So I dug through my crayon box and I found this one, which is a blue green. So it has green in it, but it's moving around that color wheel towards the blue side. So of course this one's darker, so I'm gonna really put it in the darker side of this little sphere. And that might help if I use both of these colors together. Now remember, I said that you can use your colored pencils too. Sometimes colored pencils and crayons together will give you more of a variety of those colors that you want. So now you can see how that really pops a little bit. And I might could go back and even add a little bit more of this, this green in there to make it where the light values are, all right? I'm not gonna go over here on this side of the sphere. That's where my light source is and I'm not gonna use straight lines. So that's about what I'm gonna do just on that sphere, all right? I can make this maybe even a little bit darker if I want to, but I might work on the other ones and then compare them all and then put them together. So you can see I'm gonna do the shading here. This one's gonna be a little bit difficult because it's behind that yellow one. So I'm really gonna have to work around that yellow and then here, and back here. All right, so this is the idea. It shouldn't take that long, but you know, use your brain. Don't put shadows on this side when your light's coming from that side. All righty? All right, here's my finished pile of spheres. 
Um, on the red, I needed to use red, that's the lightest, and then a red violet. Here I use purple, and, or it's called violet violet, and then blue violet to get that really dark down in there. This one, of course, I couldn't use the yellow. It just didn't show up, so I ended up with um, orange and a little bit of red orange. Okay, and so that's the way I worked my way around these spheres. So, this is finished and completed and ready to be turned in. Let me read the rubric to you just to make sure. First step was to draw a believable pile of circles in a pyramid and erase the pencil lines. Ne next, watercolor neatly. Next, round shadows. Round shadows, not straight shadows with colored pencils or crayons. Cast shadows are on the table with a variety of values from light to dark. And all the shadows, all of them, move away from one light source. We don't want multiple light sources here. And lastly, of course, good use of class time. That means that you worked really hard throughout the period and you got your work complete. Okay, the spheres didn't take that long, so your next step, of course, is to finish up your watercolor pumpkin. You want to take it from this step just to completion with this step. This was really pretty easy because you were not really in control of a lot of things. You want to make sure that you use darker around the edges and lighter in the center. Don't mix these. Remember, we're using a wet and wet style. And the whole paper should be watercolored, except for, of course, where those little glue lines are. So let me read you the rubric for this assignment. You wanna draw the pumpkins to fill the paper space with a light line, glue that is accurate, neat, and complete. Erase those extra lines after the glue dries. Sharpie carefully and ac accurately around the glue lines. Watercolor is done in a wet and wet style. And then lastly, of course, good use of class time. That means you got this finished so that we can get it graded for you. And then finally, your DeMuth composition. You wanna make sure that you fill all these background spaces. So if you have a composition that looks like this, then you wanna make sure you get these filled in. Work, 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 work. If you have some extra time and you have a composition that's completely full, that's wonderful, then go back and make sure you've done a really good job, okay? So you might wanna even add some more lines in here. You know, there's a couple of places where you can maybe even put polka dots inside these circles. You could make this a criss, well, that's already a crisscross right here. So just kind of work with some of those. All right, so you have plenty to do. All right, so you have lots of work to do. You're gonna finish your spheres, you're gonna finish your pumpkins, and you're gonna finish your demuth composition. And this weekend, I'm gonna spend the weekend grading and doing your grades to put on report cards. Remember, in every single one of those rubrics, one of the objectives is that you use good class time and get your jobs done. If you're chit-chatting with your friends and not getting your work done, then of course it's going to show up in your work because it'll be incomplete and so will your grade. So let's really start the new year off with a bang and really buckle down and get all of these things finished up so we can start something new next week. See you later.